It was about lightening the mood and making people laugh. The year was 1982. I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Comedy for the Ages. Gilbert Gottfried grew up at a time when television regularly ran classics from the golden age of comedy. They would show the Marx Brothers movies, The Three Stooges, I liked watching as a kid, Jerry Lewis, a whole bunch of people. I started to imitate people I watched on camera, and I, I think that was the beginning of showbiz for me. Maybe the earliest joke I remember telling I was either in the first grade or maybe even kindergarten. And the teacher had a newspaper. And one kid was either asleep or just not paying attention. So she placed the newspaper on his head. And, and I yelled out, those are the headlines. And that got a laugh. And my humor hasn't advanced much since then. Godfrey started his stand-up career at age 15. My older sister knew about some place in Manhattan that you could just write your name down and go up on stage when they call your name. And I, I went there with uh, both of my sisters. We went from Brooklyn to Manhattan and then wrote my name down. They called my name and I went up and back then I did, you know, mainly imitations. I'm not sure if I did well or if I was too stupid to know I bombed. For a time, Gottfried worked the non-paying New York comedy clubs. And then, I don't know, I, I got tired of just doing imitations and more and more, I started ad-libbing on stage. I found that I was more creative on stage than off. Gottfried's new improv-oriented style got him noticed. And in 1980, he was recruited to the cast of Saturday Night Live. The original cast was leaving. And back then it was sacrilege to do Saturday Night Live without the original cast. So people were panning the show before it even made it to the air. It was kind of like if in the midst of Beatlemania, you said, you announced we're getting rid of John, Paul, George, and Ringo, and we've got a group of other schmucks, and we want you to cheer for them. But Gottfried's loud, squinting, fearless persona made an impression. And in 1982, he was called to audition for a fledgling cable network called MTV. And I remember I dressed up, I had a blue, shiny blue jacket that someone had given me and my own skinny black tie. And I went on and it was just in, uh, an empty room and I just started ad-libbing stuff. Do you actually expect people to turn on a TV to hear their favorite music? And they said, look, just give me a shot. And then, you know, went home afterwards. Next thing I know, I find people are stopping me on the street because they chopped up that audition thing into a bunch of different segments and showed them throughout the day. And they used to call me the general manager of MTV. And then they would have me on for guest VJ spots. And those were fun. I remember one time they had to reshoot a bunch of them because I referred to REM as REM. <laughs> the MTV job led to more television work and eventually to movies, including a star making cameo appearance in Beverly Hills Cop 2 with Gottfried's fellow Saturday Night Live alumnus, Eddie Murphy. I remember both of us just playing off each other in and just improvising and riffing. And they used one of those takes, showed it in the movie, and people were talking about me. And they were saying like, oh, this guy steals the movie and everything. So that was, that was a very important thing. What are you trying to say, sir? I like you'd be holding something in that hand 
And this hand, you'd forget about. This hand, you'd be concentrating on. That hand, you'd go, what? What did I have there? I don't even remember. As Gottfried's fame grew, so did his notoriety. In 2001, he was criticized for making jokes about the September 11th attacks. And 10 years later, he lost a lucrative commercial deal for doing the same about the Japanese tsunami. You know, I started tweeting these jokes like, uh, I was uh, talking to my Japanese real estate agent and I said, uh, is there a school in the neighborhood? And she said, no, but there will be in a few minutes. Then next thing I know, I was out of town doing some club and I find out from the internet that Aflac has fired me as their duck and then hired a new guy to imitate my voice for less money, thus bringing closure to a horrible tragedy. But to this day, Gottfried has no regrets. I always loved one line that George Carlin said. He said, it's the duty of a comedian to find out where the line is drawn and deliberately cross over it. And that what line was important to me because he said duty. Recently, Gottfried has channeled his comedy into a new medium, podcasting. He's also become the subject of a feature-length documentary profile by filmmaker Neil Berkeley. For a couple of years, he said he dreamt about doing a documentary on Gilbert Gottfried. And I said to him, well, you should set your dreams a little higher. But Gottfried remains dedicated to his original love, stand-up where he's learned some things never change. The audience recognizes me and they're applauding. It's like, so you've got them then, but then a second after they've stopped applauding, then it's like, okay, show me. <laughs>